Psychics who claim they can contact the dead often have a big following and big financial rewards when they take their stage show on the road. But there's been scepticism about their performances in the press this week. It's come about after audience members who saw the television psychic Sally Morgan's show in Dublin claim they heard a man apparently instructing her from a room at the back of the venue. Sally Morgan strenuously denies the claims and she appeared on Richard Bacon's Five Live radio show this week. What, what I wanted to know, Christine, I saw a young boy um, here connected to Richard and also August the 3rd and it's really coming through you because of you. So we wanted to know if there was a young boy that passed in the family on your um, side or on your father's side. Well, Sally Morgan said the two men who were accused of feeding her the material were employed by Dublin Theatre as technicians and she'd never met them before. Uh, let's talk about this a little more generally now. We have the magician and psychic sceptic Paul Zenon with us now. Very good morning. Good morning. Uh, we kind of have to park, in a way, the accusations of that one specific incident to one side. Sure, yeah. But you, you have experience on both sides of, of this... This business, if you like. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, we, we won't harp on about the Sally Morgan thing. Just to say, though, that um, what she was accused of wasn't talking to those specific two technicians. She was accused of being fed some information. Right. And she said she didn't receive it through a headset. Um, I asked her yesterday on Facebook um, whether she had a separate earpiece and to clarify if anybody had spoken to her. And my post was immediately deleted. So just to clarify that. Well, tell us um, a little bit about what your experience of, of, if you like, her side of the business sure. is all about. Well, in my early 20s, I was kind of travelling as a street performer around Europe, and there were quite a few places where I wasn't allowed to perform um, by the police, and so I set up uh, doing tarot card reading, palm reading, and consultations, because I'd learned to do this um, as a teenager in Blackpool, of all places, and uh, the guy who taught me was a magician, my sort of mentor, so I learned the techniques that fortune tellers, psychics, mediums, uh, so-called, use. Uh, and I made quite a lot of money, in fact, far more than performing at that point, and found it incredibly easy to do, and that people were very gullible and wanted to hear. All right, then. so put um, us in, l l help us with a little bit of the practical stuff here. So, you, okay. say you're doing a psychic show, you're doing a show about psychics, yeah. and you're trying to you're trying to make some kind of connection with someone in the audience. Give me an idea of a trick that you, you've used. Okay, well, the, the, you know, on a big theatre show, what you do is what's called pre-show work. And in its most basic form, you would have people dotted around in the foyer overhearing people's conversations on the way in. So you get information. Everybody chats to, you know, about, to each other about what they want to hear, why they're there. So you just pick up information from your confederates in the audience. A more elaborate version, and these days it's so easy with the internet and things like Facebook, is you do research on the town you're in and the people that bought the tickets. When you buy a ticket, you're giving your name and address and credit card details um, you know there's a certain psychic we won't mention who's got up to 20,000 friends on Facebook and so all, all they would need to do is put in the town they're performing in those people will be in the audience they've got their entire wall post to find out specific details and am I right in thinking as well the, the, I mean just in terms assuming you didn't have that information which you might well have you re almost read a person and Absolutely, from that you yeah. can you can so you know a path to follow that's right it's called cold reading and basically what you do you know when if someone walks in a room you immediately make some sort of subconscious assumption about them you know whether they're working class or middle class based on what they're uh, wearing what they're or wearing uh, whether they've got dirty fingernails their hairstyle tattoos initials on a necklace all that kind of so thing how does that help you um, with that process of be because you can kind of narrow down what kind of thing that the person might be interested in and what their background might be it's actually more though to, to do with reading body language. I mean, if you're in the theatre of 2,000 people, and you'll see many mediums do this, I've got an S, a Stephen, a Susan, Samantha, and you'll see someone nudge someone, and then you start doing what's called fishing, uh, which is basically just honing in on what they want to hear or, the, you know, what they expect you to say. So you're kind of looking, so you chuck something out, yeah. and then look for reactions and then, and then home in on those people who... That's right, yeah, and so a combination of that and the pre-show work, I mean, in the old days, I mean, this has going, been going on for 150 years, um, in the old days they'd even go as far as looking around local cemeteries for newly dug graves and getting names. Uh, more recent times, they look on the electoral register so that people at the show, they've, they've got specific names, they've got addresses. There's even a software package I got offered last year, which costs about five grand a year, but which sounds a lot, but if you're raking in up to 50 grand a night, which some of these people are, it's not a lot. Let Within 30 seconds, you can tell someone's uh, front door colour, the make and model of their car, 
who their neighbours are and what they're well, like. Well, let me just say, I mean, we haven't got much time left, but it, it was, there are going to be people listening to you now saying this, saying, do you know what, I believe in it. I really do. Absolutely. And I think and it has never worked. And, and how yeah. dare you come along and just say the whole thing is fake. Maybe there are okay. people out there who do have those pa that. Yeah, those I, I don't believe that. I think there's a very good reason that you can't talk to dead people, and that's because they're dead. And it's unfortunate. We'd all like to be, believe in Santa and the Tooth Fairy and everything else. What I, what I do really object to with these mediums, and the reason I'm here, you know, I'm, I'm not making money out of being a skeptic. I mean, the reason I'm here is because I find it disgusting that people are preying on people when they're the most vulnerable, which is basically bereaved people, people with terminal illnesses, people that have lost children. I mean, there are people that stand on stage and mimic the voices of dead children to their parents and make money out of that. And the idea is that it's somehow helping people by giving them some comfort. You wouldn't say the same about a builder who sees some missing tiles on a roof that aren't really there and charges an old lady 500 quid for the privilege. And it's the same thing in my book. The bad news, Paul, is the voices I have in my head right now you have, are a, you me, have a hidden earpiece. <laughs> are telling me our time is up. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, that brings us pretty much to the end.